verses 91 to 103 of Gitanjali. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sean Michael Hogan. Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore. Translated by the original author. Verses 91 to 103. 91. O thou, the last fulfillment of life, death, my death, come and whisper to me. Day after day I have kept watch for thee, for thee have I borne the joys and pangs of life. All that I am, that I have, that I hope, and all my love, have ever flowed towards thee in depth of secrecy. One final glance from thine eyes, and my life will be ever thine own. The flowers have been woven, and the garland is ready for the bridegroom. After the wedding the bride shall leave her home, and meet her lord alone, in the solitude of night. 92. I know that the day will come when my sight of this earth shall be lost, and life will take its leave in silence, drawing the last curtain over my eyes. Yet stars will watch at night, and morning rise as before, and hours heave like sea waves casting up pleasures and pains. When I think of this end of my moments, the barrier of the moments breaks, and I see by the light of death thy world with its careless treasures. Rare is its lowliest seat, rare is its meanest of lives. Things that I longed for in vain, and things that I got, let them pass. Let me but truly possess the things that I ever spurned and overlooked. 93. I have got my leave. Bid me farewell, my brothers. I bow to you all and take my departure. Here I give back the keys of my door, and I give up all claims to my house. I only ask for last kind words from you. We were neighbors for long, but I received more than I could give. Now the day has dawned, and the lamp that lit my dark corner is out. A summons has come, and I am ready for my journey. 94. At this time of my parting, wish me good luck, my friends. The sky is flushed with the dawn, and my path lies beautiful. Ask not what I have with me to take there. I start on my journey with empty hands and expectant heart. I shall put on my wedding garland. Mine is not the red-brown dress of the traveller, and though there are dangers on the way, I have no fear in mind. The evening star will come out when my voyage is done and the plaintive notes of the twilight melodies be struck up from the king's gateway. 95. I was not aware of the moment when I first crossed the threshold of this life. What was the power that made me open out into this vast mystery like a bud in the forest at midnight? When in the morning I looked upon the light, I felt in a moment that I was no stranger in this world that the inscrutable without name and form had taken me in its arms in the form of my own mother. Even so, in death the same unknown will appear as ever known to me, and because I love this life, I know I shall love death as well. The child cries out when from the right breast the mother takes it away, in the very next moment to find in the left one its consolation. 96. When I go from hence, let this be my parting word that what I have seen is unsurpassable. I have tasted of the hidden honey of this lotus that expands on the ocean of light, and thus am I blessed. Let this be my parting word. In this playhouse of infinite forms I have had my play, and here have I caught sight of him that is formless. My whole body and my limbs have thrilled with his touch who is beyond touch, and if the end comes here, let it come. Let this be my parting word. 97. When my play was with thee, I never questioned who thou wert. I knew nor shyness nor fear. My life was boisterous. In the early morning thou wouldst call me from my sleep like my own comrade, and lead me running from glade to glade. On those days I never cared to know the meaning of songs thou sangest to me. Only my voice took up the tunes, and my heart danced in their cadence. Now, when the playtime is over, what is this sudden sight that has come upon me? The world with eyes bent upon thy feet stands in awe with all its silent stars. 98. 
I will deck thee with trophies, garlands of mighty feet. It is never in my power to escape unconquered. I surely know my pride will go to the wall, my life will burst its bonds in exceeding pain, and my empty heart will sob out in music like a hollow reed, and the stone will melt in tears. I surely know the hundred petals of a lotus will not remain closed forever, and the secret recess of its honey will be bared. From the blue sky an eye shall gaze upon me and summon me in silence. Nothing will be left for me, nothing whatever, and utter death shall I receive at thy feet. 99. When I give up the helm, I know that the time has come for thee to take it. What there is to do will be instantly done. Vain is this struggle. Then take away your hands and silently put up with your defeat, my heart, and think it your good fortune to sit perfectly still where you are placed. These my lamps are blown out at every little puff of wind, and trying to light them I forget all else again and again. But I shall be wise this time and wait in the dark, spreading my mat on the floor, and whenever it is thy pleasure, my lord, come silently and take thy seat here. 100. I dive down into the depth of the ocean of forms, hoping to gain the perfect pearl of the formless. No more sailing from harbor to harbor with this my weather-beaten boat. The days are long past when my sport was to be tossed on waves, and now I am eager to die into the deathless. Into the audience hall by the fathomless abyss, where swells up the music of toneless strings, I shall take this harp of my life. I shall tune it to the notes of forever, and when it has sobbed out its last utterance, lay down my silent harp at the feet of the silent. 101. Ever in my life have I sought thee with my songs. It was they who led me from door to door, and with them have I felt about me, searching and touching my world. It was my songs that taught me all the lessons I ever learnt. They showed me secret paths, they brought before my sight many a star on the horizon of my heart. They guided me all the day long to the mysteries of the country of pleasure and pain, and at last, to what palace gate have they brought me in the evening at the end of my journey? 102. I boasted among men that I had known you. They see your pictures in all works of mine. They come and ask me, Who is he? I know not how to answer them. I say, Indeed, I cannot tell. They blame me, and they go away in scorn, and you sit there smiling. I put my tales of you into lasting songs. The secret gushes out from my heart. They come and ask me, Tell me all your meanings. I know not how to answer them. I say, Ah, who knows what they mean? They smile and go away in utter scorn, and you sit there smiling. 103. In one salutation to thee, my God, let all my senses spread out and touch this world at thy feet. Like a rain-cloud of July hung low with its burden of unshed showers, let all my mind bend down at thy door in one salutation to thee. Let all my songs gather together their diverse strains into a single current, and flow to a sea of silence in one salutation to thee. Like a flock of homesick cranes flying night and day back to their mountain nests, let all my life take its voyage to its eternal home in one salutation to thee. End of verses 91 to 103 Recording by Sean Michael Hogan, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. End of Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore. Translated by the original author.